hold your lanyard so it's not like a shot? Yeah. Still there too, or do you want it? Yeah. <laughs> hey Greg, Trey Alexander with Fandango. Hey. Huge fan, love your work. Oh, thank you, man. How, how does uh, Steven Spielberg's earlier films, you know, kind of play into the way that you directed this one? Um, well, you know, the obvious uh, films that were this movie was influenced by were Close Encounters and E.T., but it's also a road movie set in the Southwest, and I went back and rewatched uh, Duel and Sugarland Express, which I think are really beautiful films that were made on a budget that, that, were, that were, you know, very inventive in how they were filmed. You could see Spielberg's visual genius emerging from those movies. But there's also, you know, enormous amount of tension in Duel. I looked at it for, for the, all the chase scenes we had. We have a couple of key chase scenes in the film. And uh, Sugarland Express is also a really beautiful, um, you know, almost poetic Terrence Malick kind of movie in places. And, and we wanted this film to have some of that, the beauty of the, the wide open spaces of America. Because it's these two Brits who are so completely out of the, their element. And just the way he shoots things, he puts, he puts people in a landscape or into a wide shot. It's not all just over-the-shoulder comedy filmmaking. So I, we really tried to, the DP and I, is this very talented guy, Lawrence Schur, who, who uh, shot The Hangover, who who's, you know, knows comedy, knows how to shoot comedy, but also knows how to make it look beautiful. So it was, really, it was a really fun way to approach, a uh, slightly different ap approach to a comedy. So do we call this Superbad meets E.T.? It's kind of super bad. Yeah, it's a little bit of Little Miss Sunshine with an alien in it. If uh, Alan Arkin were played by an alien, but he's like he's the, the alien's supposed to be. I mean, he's the main character. It is a triangle of characters between him and Simon and Nick. But it's also an ensemble, and we really the challenge to us was to make this CG alien give a performance and fit into a comedy ensemble. And it's and and people, even though it's an absurd concept, we're playing it in some like some version of reality. It's not a really super over the top movie. Now how does Comic-Con fit into the story? Comic-Con, the, the movie begins with our, our heroes coming to America for the first time and their dream, their version of a dream American road trip is to start a Comic-Con and then go to all the sort of alien hot spots like Area 51 and Roswell and, and you know, you know, they're, they're science fiction writers and illustrators and they want to they wanna see the American lore of, of alien history and, uh, you know, very X-Files obsessed type kind of guys. And, you know, because they're from that world, Comic-Con is like their, their dream to go to. So we open the film with a little montage and, you know, it's a way to show them as they're true believers. They're the real deal. Um, Jeffrey Tambor plays this fictional science fiction writer named Adam Shadowchild, who's extremely pompous and he's great. And it really just sort of sets up, uh, you know, but we don't, I mean, we didn't want to poke fun at, at Comic-Con, take any kind of pot shots. We really, we're all, we're all, we're all lovers of the world and the genre, so. I was going to say, Comic-Con's like such a big supporter of you and, 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 and everybody that was in the film. So, I mean, I can see how you, that would be very cool and uh, for them to even just be mentioned in the film. Yeah, they, they were super nice and they let us have tons of their... We shot, we couldn't afford to shoot here, that we couldn't actually get access and permission to shoot here because there's just so many people. But they let, let us borrow all their stuff and take it to New Mexico and fill up a convention center. and recreate it and a bunch of people who had just been here various artists comic book artists came with their booths and played themselves as extras and it was yeah it was really fun i'm curious i i, I don't know if this is true or not but i still listen to art bell you know it, it, does he make a cameo or does he have any any little no, i mean you know i was trying to think of a place to have him appear on the radio but uh i it could still happen we still have a lot of work to uh, there's, there's some night driving scenes where I thought it would be great to be hearing Art Bell. Um, yeah, I, in college I listened to Art Bell a lot. Yeah, I mean, he's on, you know, I, I catch him at late night, you know, on KFI in L.A. So. Right. Yeah, no, I always loved it, yeah. Cool, man. I'm really looking forward to seeing something. Yeah, seeing something, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you.